Uh, my name is Greg Dunlap. I'm the initiative lead for Drupal 8 for the initiative to improve configuration management and deployment uh, for uh, Drupal sites in the next version of Drupal. So essentially, I'm a project manager when it comes right down to it. I uh, helped organize a group of people to design a new configuration management system for Drupal. And we wrote a spec and put it out to the community for discussion and then started writing it and building it. Uh, most of the code is not actually being written by me. It's being written by other members of the community and uh, being put forth for review by the community. And mostly what I'm focusing on is what we're calling cat herding these days, getting people together, um, guiding discussions towards resolution, um, putting together ideas, soliciting ideas from people who I think might have interesting things to say, trying to make sure that the system moves forward in a reasonable way, and removing blockers for the people who are actually doing all the real work. Um, so traditionally, one of the biggest pain points in Drupal development in all of the past versions of Drupal has been the fact that um, because Drupal's configuration and other information is stored in the database intermingled with the Drupal content, it's been very difficult to do something like build, um, build uh, advances or new features on an existing site and push them forward without erasing all of the content that's already there. Um, and this becomes especially apparent on sites with a lot of user-generated content. You'll deploy a brand new site and users will start commenting and posting forum posts and stuff like that. And in the meantime, you're working on a new section of the site you get to the point where you're supposed to deploy it and there's no good way to slice out the stuff that you've done that's stored in the database that's separate from the con that's separate from the content of the site your easiest thing would be to do would be to dump your database and push it forward but if you do that you're going to replace all of the user generated content that's happened since you started developing um, and that problem has been a problem that exists in Drupal for a long time. Another reason that that's a problem is that there's no centralized API for developing this configuration. There's a hundred different ways to do it, and while some contributed modules had some success in defining these APIs, the fact is that a lot of Drupal core doesn't use them, and so it's very difficult to, uh, to have a, a single workflow for separating this stuff out and moving it forward from site to site. So. Um, what we've done as part of the initiative is we've defined a new API and system for storing configuration that's exportable to files, um, and these files can be deployed to a site and re-imported, and then your configuration can be replicated on the new site. And there's, a, and there's a definition for how the files should be formatted, and an API for interacting with these files, and for responding to changes in the files, because sometimes you'll have a module that needs to respond to a specific piece of configuration being loaded, or even your module may need to respond to another module's configuration being loaded and all of this kind of thing. And so designing all of that, building the processes by which it can uh, work, integrating it with Drupal's multilingual and, and language handling system and all of these kinds of things, so that when we get done, we'll have a really robust solution for solving what is really the biggest pain point for Drupal developers that's existed in the last five years. I mean, one of the biggest things is that we're all volunteers and, and there's no bosses, right? I can't give anybody orders on what to work on necessarily. There's a lot of people who are interested and we all have a common goal, so we all work together in general. But I mean, if one of them wants to break off and say, I think that what you're developing is terrible, I'm going to develop an alternative and see if I can sell it to the community. There's ultimately nothing that can stop me from doing such a thing. Um, I can try to explain to this person that that's really counterproductive to everybody's goals, but nothing can stop them from doing doing that all they want to. It's very difficult to put together scrums and timelines and milestones because, again, we're a volunteer community and a lot of people sort of come in and out of core development as they can based on their work schedules. You know, a lot of people will take their two or three weeks in between projects, come and do some work on core, but then they disappear. Um, so there's not a lot of reliability in the, in the um, people who are helping you out in general. Um, some, some of the groups get lucky and they find somebody who has a regular piece of time every week to work on something and they come and volunteer and they become sort of a lieutenant or, or a second in command kind of thing, um, helping uh, more lower level issues move on. And I've seen some people get, they have weekly meetings and define priorities and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. But that situation is reasonably rare. Um, and so that's been a big problem um, as well. 
Um, the distributed nature of the community is a problem simply for things like time zones, getting people together to have discussions. Um, we, we have uh, bi-weekly meetings of all the Drupal initiative leads, and uh, they're in Taiwan, the West Coast, the East Coast, and Europe and finding a time that works for everybody is literally impossible. And so um, just getting everybody together in the same room to talk for a couple of hours is really difficult. I mean, one of the things that's most exciting to me in Drupal 8 has been our, um, our real dedication towards, um, towards not reinventing the wheel for stuff that's happening in other open source projects. So a big thing that's happened is Larry Garfield, who is running the initiative that's called Whiskey, but is really focused on improving the routing and web services functionality in Drupal Core, has brought a lot of code in from the Symphony project to replace code that we had previously written in Drupal itself because the code in the Symphony project had been, was much more modern and already solved a lot of the problems that we were trying to solve. Um, he's also um, promoted bringing in code from the Composer project for doing package management. Um, we've brought in the Twig templating system um, to potentially um, replace our own templating system. It's also a part of the Symphony project. And that interaction with other open source uh, projects is, is amazing to me because, I mean, we are a content management system. And if there are other well-proven templating systems out there, there's no reason why we shouldn't use them. It increases our base of users that are familiar with them to come into ours rather than having to learn another templating language. And it's a very well-proven system that's very flexible and works really well. And so there's no reason why we shouldn't bring those things in. And that's like one of the, the biggest positive things I've seen out of Drupal 8 is our acceptance to finally get rid of our sort of uh, fear of stuff that we haven't invented ourselves or the need or the feeling that we need to invent everything ourselves when there are several cases where we don't have to.